I figured since I've been doing a lot of bigger templates lately, I thought I'd break things up with this Notion tutorial on how to create a dynamic navigation bar. In short, I want to show you how to break down a rather complex workflow in Notion into easy to manage steps for your team or for yourself, like a step-by-step -step form. Some of the functions I'll be discussing in this tutorial is how to use synced blocks, linked databases, implementing bookmarks, and identifying empty cells with a formula. Let's get right into it. Let's go through the example databases that we're going to be working with. I wanted to share with you an example of a database with a ton of properties. If I go over to the properties button, you'll notice there is a ton of properties here. I want to be able to compartmentalize a lot of this. So let's go into person five and take a look. This is something like a research database to find information about people in a family tree. Let's get into breaking this database down into steps. Going back to that home page, the first thing I want to do is separate my links. I want to separate my backend databases from my procedural pages. So I'm just going to enter and I'm going to go forward slash callout. This callout is going to be for all of the databases. In this case, there's only two. I can just drag this under the title. And if I want this title to be empty and not showing me type something, I can press the key option or alt and space. If you're on a Mac, it will create an empty character. It'll give you a nicer, cleaner look. If you're on Windows, it would be, I believe, alt plus 255 and change this icon on the side here. There will be a link down below to this website with some really nice minimal icons that are free. And let's put a database icon here. Going over to link. Nice. I can also change the color of this callout. I'm going to create another block down below by clicking this plus icon next to my previous block. And I'm going to search for callout again. This one is going to be for all my procedures. I already have the first page made. Again, I'm going to go option space because I'm on a Mac. Clean that up and I'm going to change the icon here. I can also create two different columns here by dragging one block next to the other. So I am zoomed in a little bit. I'm going to zoom all the way out as I go ahead and fill in the first step in this procedure. I want to have inside of every step a header and the header is a call out. You'll notice that I have other call outs within this call out. This call out here is going to be a place where you can describe this step in the procedure and what it entails. Nested inside is a call out for what you need to keep in mind, underneath of that, what you need to avoid, and important links to keep in mind. As for links, if I go over here and copy a link and paste it over to Notion, there is an option to create a bookmark. And what you can do is nest this block even further inside of this important links call out. You'll notice that it does take on the color of the call out. Now let's link that example database, the family who's who, into this page. So I'm going to create a linked database. And I'm going to search for family who's who. Now what's nice about linked databases is that any filters, sorts, database views, anything that helps you visualize data will not affect the original database. However, any entries added to this linked database will be added to the original. So for this one, I just want to see properties that help me get some basic information about identification of this person. So if I go to properties, I can toggle on just the stuff I want to see here, which is identification, family, generation, and branch. The next thing I want to do is start creating that navigation bar. So I'm going to create a new block by pressing this plus button, and I'm going to search for sync, sync block. This should create a red line around an empty block. I'm just going to go forward slash h3 for an h3 heading and call this navigation. I want to create two columns again. So I'm going to press this plus button next to the database, drag this empty block next to my navigation bar, and then drag this link database into that new column, just this column to about here. Before we move on, let's give this page an icon, maybe a check mark. What's going to happen is that when we're done making this page, I want to go ahead and duplicate it for our next step. 
And what that will help us do is just duplicate some of these reoccurring elements. Like I always want this header in every step of my process, and I always want a link to this database. I may want different properties I'm viewing, but I still want the page to be set up just like this with our navigation bar to the left-hand side. So with that in mind that we are going to be duplicating, if you want to add any filters to this first step, I would do it here. So if I add a filter for something like, I wanna make sure maybe I'm working on this every single day. There's a lot of data going into this very frequently. So I wanna be able to filter it out so I don't see a long list of entries every time I go through each step of the process. I do have a property called created. Created is a property that upon creating a new row like this, a created timestamp is shown. Using this, I wanna filter all entries that are only created today. And that'll give me just that one entry. I'm going to delete that filter for now, just to give you guys a good example of how this would look with properties filled out. Now that we have that, I do want to add two more properties here that will help us with the bookmarking aspect of this workflow. First one being a bookmark property. That is the property type select. This will give us a drop down menu. The first select option will be save for later. This will be any changes we need to make to this particular entry, but isn't very urgent. The next option may be important. You can also change the colors of these options. The next property I want to make is missing info. This will help us with creating a formula to return all of those empty cells. This property type will be a checkbox. Now it's a matter of just creating this navigation bar. I want to type out the first step, step one, add identification. I want to turn this text into a link to the page we're currently in. To quickly copy uh, the link to the page you're in, there is a shortcut. It's command L. From there, I'm just going to highlight this text and paste. If you hover your mouse over the text, it'll give you the page it is linked to. Back to the home page, I'm going to highlight this first link and duplicate. Let's go into this copy and rename it to dates. Now I want to collect all the dates for each one of these members. Get that calendar emoji. All the previous steps properties are still here, so I'm going to hide those and just show the ones I want here, which is all the dates. And I'm going to keep that bookmark and missing info checkbox. Looks like person two does have missing info, date of birth, and that is an important cell. So I'm going to add a bookmark for save for later and missing info. Now below step one, I'm going to put in step two, add dates. Command L to get the link to this page, highlight and paste. Now let's go ahead and make step three. This process is pretty quick from here. Just going to duplicate dates, and keep going. I have about seven different steps I want to incorporate. So step three is going to be recording all of the places these people have been born, resided, died, or were buried. And I'm gonna have another icon for this as well. Again, a lot of this procedural design is just for the visualization ease of a workflow. Step three, add places. Command L to get the link to this page and paste it in. And of course, we're going to look at the properties we want to fill out here. Birthplace, residences, death place, and burial. Keeping, bookmark, and missing info. All right, moving on to step four. And we'll do this one together and I'll do the rest off camera. So duplicate, You'll notice that this synced block, every time I add more links, more blocks to the synced area, it will update everywhere. Okay, now let's add relationships. Command L, paste this in. Okay, so I've implemented all of those seven steps. Let's go to step one, identification. I can navigate to step two, three, four. Of course, I could also add something else to this navigation and everywhere else 
that something else will show up. That's the beauty of that synced block. Now you'll notice logically, you could also do something like this. You could turn maybe this callout into a synced block. I mean, you could copy this, copy and sync, and just sync it to every single page, like an identification. Instead of this navigation, I could just paste and sync the one in the front page so that every time I update this callout, it will also update in this navigation home page, and that might be more beneficial for you. And it looks really nice. I want to share with you how you can design this navigation bar so that every step you'll be able to have an indication of what page you're on via the navigation bar. So if I go to this original synced block, which is located in identification, and you can check to see where your original synced block is by clicking inside of the block, going to the link to the far left hand side, Going down the list here, you'll see at the very top will be your original, which is in the page identification. Go to these three dots to the right-hand side and unsync all. Now, if I go through these links to step two, for instance, everything will load in just like it was before, just without that synced block. So all of these links will still appear. Now, what I wanna do is whenever I'm in a certain page, I want to color this block with a red color. Go to step two and do the same, but with step two. Step three. This is also a really nice visualization uh, method, especially if you're using Notion for web pages. And the last one here. So running through all of these links, step one, step two, three, and down the list. Now let's go into how I would implement bookmarks and how to view missing cells. The first thing I want to do inside of this home page is create another link database to family who's who. And I'm going to make sure that this link database is a board view. I'm going to add a view. Board. Let's delete this original table view and work with this board view. First thing I want to do is get rid of a lot of these properties. All of them are showing, so I just want to untoggle pretty much all of them. Next, I want to group this, group by bookmark. And that's what board view does. It organizes all of your entries in a database by a certain select property and their options. Let's hide all of the entries with no bookmark for a cleaner look. I want to show all of the important entries that happen to have missing information. So to do that, we do need to create a formula and create a new property called cells to fill. Property type formula. Now what I want to do is if there are any cells that are empty and are particularly important, I want to be able to indicate to the user or to myself that these cells need to be filled in. So I'm going to say if the first important cell is summary. You can go down these list of properties here. Go to summary. If property summary is empty, so I'm going to wrap this around the empty function. Then show me the text. So let's get an emoji up. Pencil. Exclamation point. Summary needs to be filled. If this is not empty, so the false condition, I'm gonna leave it blank. Just add a space here and maybe a space here. Copy this entire line, space plus, and paste it in. The first thing I wanna do is in front of the second summary needs to be filled in, I'm gonna go backslash N. This will create a new break in the lines. For this one, not prop summary, but place of birth, birthplace is empty. I will say birthplace needs to be filled. I'm going to do it again, plus paste. And instead of summary, let's put in date of birth. If this is empty, date of birth needs to be filled. And right before, I'm going to go backslash n again. 
Let's do this one more time, plus. Now let's look at if the sources are empty. Sources need to be filled. And a backslash n before that text. Now that we have this, we do have that missing info checkbox. What I wanna do is convert this checkbox into a formula. Let's make this automatic. Via just a simple checkbox inside of those views we had, remember, we can see a check for missing info. Now an easy way to do this, if you already have that cells to fill formula filled out, is to say cells to fill, here's the property, and let's wrap this one around not empty. So it's filled, not empty. Last thing to do is to hide these properties. For missing info, let's always show. And for cells to fill, let's hide when empty. And with this board view, I want to view all those cells that need to be filled out. So I'm going to go to the menu here, go to properties, and make sure that cells to fill is toggled on. I can also drag this to important, back to save for later, from this home page. Now let's say that the person with missing info doesn't have a bookmark attached to them. They don't have a bookmark option there. I can always add a view. Let's add a table view called all missing info. Make it a table. Go to properties again. And I want to see cells to fill formula that we made, the missing info checkbox, and the bookmark. You'll notice that these new line breaks don't show up in a table view. That is because wrap cells is not toggled on. If you toggle them on, those new line breaks will appear. So that's everyone with missing info, missing important info via that formula. And then you have your board view with all of your bookmarks. Other than that, I'll leave all relevant links down below and let's go right into the outro. I hope you guys really like this little tutorial. I wanted to break up my bigger templates, one of which is a big template at the end of the week. It is gamifying your task management in Notion. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. But until then, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. I will see you guys next time.